All right, guys, this is Charles with Super Bright LEDs and VIP Distributing in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're going to be doing a uh, Scion TC. Uh, it's a 2014. We're going to be putting some footwell lighting. It's an RGB LED strip. Changes colors, does every color under the sun, and you can dim it and all kinds of stuff. We're going to be using their mini LED controller, and that's really the simplest thing to install. Power and ground. Everything else is done with a wireless remote. Adhesive strip, you just stick it up there. I think it's going to take us longer to solder these four connections up than it does to do the rest of the car. All right, so Scion, or you know, is owned by Toyota. They offer an RGB LED kit from the factory that allows you to put this underneath there, and it uses a separate controller. It allows you to control these different colors from the factory. This is what our LED is going to do. What Scion doesn't make is a version of this for a manual transmission, which is why we're going to use the super bright ones. Number one, I think they're going to be a lot brighter. Uh, they're going to look better, uh, and they're going to work better, and they're going to be able to stay on while the car is running and driving down the road instead of only when the doors open. Okay, so we're, we're going to use a three-foot section cut in half to, uh, to a foot and a half each side, so it's almost the exact width of the dash. It's, uh, it's going to look good and light up that whole width instead of that little eight-inch piece that Toyota offers. So Super Bright was nice enough to solder on this little pigtail uh, on the RGB LED strip. Uh, normal LED strips have a power and a ground. This one has four because you have to control the color code. But because we're doing two of them, we had to cut it in half, which means we're going to have to make that connection again uh, on our own by soldering it. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You're going to want to strip back the wires pretty short. So I'm using, that's probably about an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to want to tin that. So get the solder in there before you try to apply it. That way you don't have to overheat the LED strip. I've already stripped back the coating, the epoxy, and the, uh, the silicone off the top of it so that I could get to this. Sometimes when you pull it back, it'll look like you're down to the end. But unless that stuff is shiny, uh, you're not all the way down there. You need to keep peeling back. So we're going to set the tinned piece on there, come back in and heat it up. This is the LED controller. That's really all there is to it. A little circuit board, power ground, four pin connector thing to look for there's a little arrow uh, embossed in there and there's another arrow on here plug it in and that's literally all there is to it and then go power it up make sure it works before we install it in the car hey look at that we've uh we've got the leds temporarily wired up to our test bench to make sure that all of our soldered connections are good and make sure that the controller uh is driving them properly uh, both sides look good. All the colors are represented, so we know we got good connections on all of the soldered joints. So now we're ready to clean it up, make it look pretty, and stick it in the car. Just finished taping up this wire harness, making it all look good. Uh, that just leaves us using the adhesive to stick it underneath the dash, finding power and ground, probably put in a switch so the customer can turn it on and off. The wonderful people at Toyota make cars that are easy to work on. Uh, this one, the main fuse right here got main power ignition here's where they tied in their factory RGB controller so we're we'll probably use that for power and probably put in a switch up here for them what we're going to do is use a, uh, a standard automotive relay it's a single pole double throw relay or an SBDT um, standard 5 we're going to use take 30. This is the, the normally uh, open and take this output uh, to the LED strip uh, or the actually to the RGB uh, controller. We're going to take 87 uh, and 86 both to uh, constant 12 volts through a 5 amp fuse. And we're going to take 85 to the negative dome light output control. So every time the doors open, this thing gets grounded. Um, and then this combined with Constant power on 86 opens these contacts, which will then send power to the LEDs every time we open the door. So basically, when the dome light comes on, uh, those LEDs under the dash are going to come on. At the same time, we're going to take 87A through a switch that the customer can use to ignition or an accessory output. Uh, I believe I found a, an ignition source that's right next to everything that we're doing. So we're going to use that with that switch. So while the customer is driving down the road with the doors closed, they can flip that switch, turn the lights on. Uh, or even when the switch is in the off position, when you open the lights, or open the door, the lights will come on. Okay, so my ground is to a metal bracket behind the dash with no paint on it. Uh, I've got my constant here, running through a five amp fuse into the relay. My door trigger, uh, going to 85 again. And my ignition source, which runs through another five amp fuse, goes up to this switch up top of the dash, back down into the relay. 
So now, when I turn on, or op actually when I open my door, wham, you get that. Color changing, cool stuff. So now we just have to stick it up underneath there, make it all look good, and we're done. There you go. So there's our switch on the dash, which when the key is on will allow you to turn those on anytime. All right, now I'm just uh, covering up these fuses. Uh, I mean, it's a slim chance, but there is a little exposed piece for testing up there. And if, if it were to come in contact with some metal, it could pop that fuse. And uh, while it wouldn't damage the car, the customer might complain when the LEDs quit working. Uh, so we're gonna tape those up and then we're gonna clean up this wire harness, uh, make it look a, a little prettier, uh, keep it out of the way of all these Toyota plugs in case some Toyota mechanic decides he needs to get in here and mess with something. We want we want our stuff to be up and out of the way. We've got everything mounted. Got our control unit tucked in behind the dash. It uses uh, RF frequency, so you don't have to have a line of sight, and it'll still work just fine. And we're going to put this back on there and uh, wrap it up. When it comes to sticking down these LED uh, strips, they come with a 3M brand adhesive on the back, unlike some of those off brands you get at the auto parts store. Um, it is a name brand high quality adhesive. There are different ways to prepare the surface. You've got an alcohol prep pad, standard basically rubbing alcohol, uses to clean, you know, get all the grease and the oil off the surface. You have 3M branded VHB, which is specific to uh, 3M VHB brand tape. It's a 3M adhesive that's on there. It's not a VHB, but it's pretty dang close. So this is what we typically use. You also have an adhesion promoter that works on glass, metal, and other uh, primers. It's basically a self-etching primer. Uh, and then you have the, the king of them all, the uh, Automotive Adhesion Promoter Universal 4298. This stuff will clean any surface. Anything will stick to it. Um, you can use it on plastic. You can use it on vinyl. You can use it on uh, metals. Um, it will discolor it a little bit, but if it's underneath the dash, it works great. If you're using this on a motorcycle and it's exposed to the elements, you can do this on the inner side of a fender or anything like that and whatever you stick with it if it's a 3m tape it's going to stick with this stuff we've got our adhesion promoter we're going to clean the surface that we're sticking this thing to and we're going to use a lot of pressure because we want to make sure it gets nice and clean and then we're going to stick it up there facing down of course you don't want to have the leds directly aiming at you you don't want to look at the strip you want to see them reflecting off of other surfaces, whether it's a shiny surface like the plastic or a, a surface like the carpet. On uh, motorcycle applications, you want them shining off of, you know, shiny painted chrome surfaces, things like that. And then we've got all these different modes that this thing can do. We've got fading in and out, multiple colors. We've got solid colors, red, yellow, blues, greens, violets, white, color changing. Uh, and you can change the speeds at which these things do. So with the remote, you've got different applications. You can adjust the speeds, the colors, uh, the different modes of flashing, whether you want solid flash, if you want it to fade in and out. It's something like 19 different modes, 20 different colors, five brightness levels, 10 levels of speed, and then there's a demo mode that goes through all of them for you. So if you wanted to just cycle different modes, uh, you can. Thanks for checking out this video. This is Charles with VIP Distributing and Super Bright LEDs in St. Louis, Missouri. For any questions you have for the products used in this video, click on the links below.